Although the last recession ended up nearly a decade ago, some people around the world are still feeling the ripples of its impact. As the history has shown, it's only a matter of time before the next downturn will happen. So I'm here to tell you about the indicators that can predict the economic crisis and also explain why understanding them will give you a slight edge in investing. So keep watching and also subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet, because that really motivates me to produce a better content for you. So let's start. Money Supply M2 Indicator This indicator counts money ready to be deployed in the economy, also adding some conservative investments that are still relatively liquid. Simply saying, without enough money to lend, the businesses cannot expand. Inflation causes a need for money, so businesses can finance investments and projects. If money doesn't keep pace with an expanding economy, these investments cease to happen. During the last recession, the economy faced a liquidity crisis in many assets, because the investors went to sell those assets. But due to the lack of buyers or money to purchase those assets, they were unable to do so which leads to the drawdown that investors has experienced. The second indicator is building permits. Building permits measures the amount of approvals given by local jurisdictions for the construction of new or existing buildings. Because of a large amount of knock-on employment that the construction creates, increasing building permits is usually a sign that people or businesses are more interested in building new projects. Since the construction typically provides free support job for every one direct construction job, decrease in building permits usually indicates that there are going to be a potential decrease in total jobs. The third indicator is durable good orders. It looks at orders placed with manufacturers for hard goods. As durable goods requires large amounts of capital, most of the companies would not invest a large amounts of money without the need to support it. Companies purchase durable goods for two reasons. They are either replacing their old equipment or increasing production to meet the demand. Now consider a steady decline in durable good orders preceded by decline in building permits. Companies slow construction and order less machinery as the projects dry up. However, the decline in orders doesn't have to start with the construction. The fourth one is average weekly hours. Usually an average person works something between 33 to 36 hours per week. When employers start working in place with more hours, they usually do so to meet the higher demand until they will be confident that the demand will be staying. After that, they employ the workers permanently. As average time declines, it means that people bring home less money and spend less. It usually indicates that these people will soon let go of their jobs and file for unemployment. And the fifth one is initial jobless claims. It indicates the total number of people filed for jobless claims in the past week. Rising jobless claims usually indicates that more and more people are out of work or that there is a higher benefit for jobless insurance versus any available employment. Jobless claims mean that people cannot find an employment and have to rely on government assistance. Not only those unemployed people can spend the money readily, their reliance on government assistance usually drains those coffers that in turn can reduce the government's expenditures and overall GDP. Consumer expectations. It is the index of how consumers view the business economy. It looks at 5,000 household response to questions about business, employment conditions and their income in the near term. This index attempts to measure how people feel about their prospects and the prospects of others. A higher index value means people feel good about the economy and may take more investment risks. That's all for today, guys. I hope that now you understand what are those indicators that can predict the economic crisis. If you like this video, put this video a big thumb up. Please subscribe to my channel because that really motivates me. Also, comment below your favorite stocks that you want me to overview in my future videos. Visit stockmetrics.net in order to see the full blog post and I would leave it the link in the description box down below. And I would see you next week, so bye!